Hey everybody. So, um, little story, I started my career as a professional musician. And one of the reasons why I got out of it um, was actually the fact that I've always been having these massive stage frights. So, that's why, you know, I tend to now speak at this, like, local, small meetups after the headliners. And speaking of uh, poor life choices, uh, I do worry about the way people own their private keys and, and the way they own Bitcoin. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, today. So have you ever wondered who owns uh, the most Bitcoin? I you know, did some digging, and I would like to share uh, those numbers and that data with you. So out of, uh, out of all the Bitcoins that will ever exist in the network, um, you know, 7% is going to be mined in the future. 9% is, you know, belongs to the miners and to the Satoshi himself. Another 10% is currently held by governments, funds, and all kinds of businesses. Another 17% is unfortunately lost for good, because simply you know, the owners of the private keys are not having access to them any longer. And now the big question, who owns the remaining 12 million bitcoins? And it's actually all of us. It's, it's you and it's me, the individual owners. So let's talk about you first. How much Bitcoin do you own? <laughs> and obviously, I don't want you to tell me, right? Uh, I don't want you to tell to anybody, actually. I want you to think about this. So seriously now, like everybody can pause the presentation here for five seconds. And everybody think of that number, right? Of whatever you own in Bitcoin. And now look at those screens in front of you and think about this question. Because it's, it's equally important. And that is how much do you actually own your Bitcoin? Because it turns out that there is you know, hell, a lot of people in the world who don't own it all that much. So there's roughly, as an estimation, half a billion uh, crypto users. And only 2% actually store their private keys in an offline way, in a hardware wallet, in a device that is specifically built to make those private keys secure. Now, uh, why is that a problem? I think there are actually three major problems with this. So let's talk about those. Number one, a shocking number, but in 2022 alone, you know, more than $15 billion worth of Bitcoin and other crypto uh, got lost through you know, hacks, scams, and bankruptcies. Those later two are, by the way, usually connected. Speaking of which, do you know why the CEO of the largest crypto exchange haven't come to the, you know, the largest Bitcoin conference in the world, BTC Prague? Yeah, well, I cannot say, but let's say he's not on holiday. Um, you know, but these, uh, these things, I mean, these statistics, it's not, I mean, they are not just statistics. So just a couple of weeks ago, you probably know, but like a major Japanese exchange got hacked of another $300 million worth of Bitcoin. So these, you know, centralized institutions are a massive honeypot for, for hackers. And it has always been that and it will be always like that. So another problem, number two. You know, we are talking about hacks, but there are companies in the market, in this Bitcoin-related market, that you cannot truly really hack any Bitcoin from. And you, you know why that is? Because they don't actually own any Bitcoin. You know, banks and Wall Street have been labeling, uh, have been lab oh, sorry, have been labeling <laughs> 
uh, Bitcoin as a drug money and weapons money for the you know, last uh, 15 years, uh, which is 15 years minus three, three months when the ETFs, of course, of course got, um, got approved. But I'm guessing you know, the 1.3 um, trillion market capitalization and those 500 million users of crypto kind of changed their mind in due course. You know, and there is a problem number three related to this, and those are basically fees for not owning your uh, Bitcoin directly. So let's take an example of that at ETF I mentioned. If you, you know, take a position, as an example, one Bitcoin into an ETF, and you hold it for five years, you can expect uh, to pay up to thousands of dollars in fees. Now multiply it by, you know, by maybe 10, because you, we are hodlers, we want to keep the you know, Bitcoin for long. So just imagine how much fees you would have to pay. And just as a rule of thumb, the, the less ownership you take in Bitcoin, the more you can expect to pay in these, in these recurring fees. So on one side, you have self-custody, you hold your keys, then maybe you have a custodian in the middle, and then maybe you have ETF, some fund, and at the end of the line, maybe you have even a, you invest a stock in a company that owns Bitcoin. So the farther you go out, out of the true ownership of Bitcoin, the more you can expect to pay. Now, what if there was a solution uh, to that problem? What if uh, you could own your Bitcoin in an extremely secure way? What if you could take the full ownership of it without any intermediaries? And what if you would not have to pay any fees for doing so? Well, we built it. Uh, and today, we are introducing the most user-friendly hardware wallet that we have ever built. We call it Trezor Safe. Safe. Five. And here it is. And if we can get the sound, that would be awesome. Awesome, right? So as I said, this is the most user-friendly hardware wallet we have ever built. And it's meant to be used every day. So we are really focusing on users that interact with Bitcoin you know, quite often. And that's why we included a color touch display and a haptic feedback. We completely rewrote the firmware, so it has all these beautiful micro-interactions and animations. Obviously, uh, hardware wallets need to be durable, so the display is covered by this edge-to-edge -edge, uh, Gorilla glass. And for uh, the hardware security, we also included a secure element, which secure elements are basically specialized chips that protect the, the, the secret on the device in case uh, there would be an actual physical attack on the, on the device. Now, I know this is a Bitcoin conference, so bear, bear with me. Uh, the device can store uh, you know, thousands of coins and also Bitcoins, of course, if you need to, and all kind of uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, 
You can use all our software, uh, sorry, all our hardware devices with our software, which we call Trezor Suite. And you know, as the name suggests, it is a suite of different services and features. Uh, you can do actually sort of everything you need with, with your Bitcoin and crypto. So you can, you can buy Bitcoin, you can sell Bitcoin, God forbid, and you can also exchange your crypto into Bitcoin. And you can do all that also with uh, our mobile app, to which we are adding more and more features. Uh, we actually added one more thing to Trezor Say 5 and our future uh, devices as well. Uh, as you probably know, we are the inventors of the first human readable backup, uh, which is called BIP39. That's, those are those words that you, know, you write down as a backup of your private keys. But we also uh, created something uh, called Slip39, which is a multi-share version of that backup. What that basically means that uh, it's now a default option in Trezor Say 5, and you can create one seed, one share. But you know, as you kind of progress, for example, as a user, you can add more of these shares without the need of transferring the funds to a new uh, wallet. And that basically protects you against the single, uh, single point of failure you know, type of uh, situations. Um, you know, the device comes in three beautiful colors and three beautiful names. Um, black, graphite, green barrel, and violet ore. It retails at 169. And it's actually available as of now for the order on our eShop. And the shipping starts uh, beginning of July for the black graphite and mid-August for the green and the violet. Now, I bet you know that at least half of you in this room, or maybe almost everybody, have onboarded or been onboarded to Bitcoin by your friends. Right? And as Bitcoin is pumping again and the price is going up, you know, your new friends, maybe you don't even know of, will now you know, start calling you and then they will be asking, OK, how to start with Bitcoin, which hardware wallet to use, and why Trezor? Um, and you know, that's happening to us as well. It's a beautiful challenge. It's a beautiful problem to have. And we thought, OK, why not to solve this? Why not to do something about this? And that's why today we are launching a new service that we call Trezor Expert. Have a look. You know, so we kind of, uh, yeah, it's uh, beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, you kind of know, you know, you made it in the, I guess, Bitcoin industry and self custody industry if you can hire all these, you know, bass actors from Hollywood. Um, I'm just kidding, because I wanted to say all of these, or most of these people in our ads are actually my colleagues uh, who are taking, you know, the leading roles in making Bitcoin more secure. And I would really like to thank them. Uh, you guys are awesome. And actually, thanks. Yes. And you can actually uh, meet our Trezor expert at our booth and our other booth uh, outside um, this building. So, you know, these guys, they are not only good looking, but they are also extremely knowledgeable. They really are experts of self custody and our ecosystem. And the way the service works is basically that you book a one-on-one -on -one session with, with one of these guys, and they will help you to get safely 
into Trezor, into self-custody, and they will explain the core concepts. So again, the service is uh, available as of now on our eShop. It, it uh, retails at 99 or is available at, at $99. And actually, it has been launched already uh, silently a month ago uh, because we wanted to test it properly before we do you know, this bigger uh, public uh, announcement. And I'm really proud of the fact that 100% of the users, and I really mean everybody who bo booked the session, give it a full rating in terms of the quality and how they felt about you know, the quality of their, the advice that they were given. Now, we have two more things for you today before we wrap up. And I would like to change the color to a more appropriate one. And again, have a look. I know. <laughs> so we launched a Bitcoin-only limited edition of Trezor Safe 3 uh, last year. And because it was a massive um, success and, and we sold out all those uh, 2013 devices within the first 24 hours, we decided that we would like to make the Bitcoin-only Trezor Safe 3 and Trezor Safe 5 as a permanent addition to our portfolio of products. So just a, as a reminder, uh, the Bitcoin-only Trezor Safe 3 edition retails at 79. It is actually available at our booth and again on our eShop. And the Trezor Safe 5 retails at 169. And again, uh, you can order it right now on our eShop and shipping starts uh, beginning of July. And with that said, I would like to finish this with, with one last thought. Um, you know, keeping your Bitcoin on, on exchanges is not the same as owning it. Keeping your Bitcoin with a custodian is not owning it. Keeping your Bitcoin in a hot wallet is perhaps owning it, but maybe not for very long. And keeping your Bitcoin as a legal contract through some fund or ETF is not owning it. Owning your private keys, owning your Bitcoin is actually owning it. So let me ask you one last time. How much do you actually own your Bitcoin? Because if you don't have a full control over it today, it's time to make it yours. Enjoy the conference. <laughs>